Well, I, I would actually ask even a more specific question. I'm not, I'm not trying to go you, but an actual question, which is like, what is the use case for Solana that gets you excited the most? Not like developers love it type use case, but the specific, you know, top two or three. That's what I'm curious about. I mean, I think, you know, Solana so far has been uh, most successful in attracting DeFi projects. I don't think there's a DeFi project on any ecosystem right now. Like, it, it's not where I invest. It's not, you know, I don't think it's particularly, you know, there's a few uh, interesting use cases out there that are kind of touching the real world and aren't just kind of incestuous DeFi. But the promise of Solana, I think, if it if it gets big, is that more finance moves on chain and it moves on to Solana as opposed to one of the other networks because so it's fast, fast settlement times and and cheap transactions. And so if you're excited about Solana, I think that's what you're excited about for now. It, it's in the same state that a lot of crypto is in, which is people playing around and experimenting. And in that case, like NFTs are cheaper, cheaper transaction costs. You can move more fluidly. I think the the transaction volume on things like Mag Magic Eden, uh, which is their NFT marketplace, are as high or higher than uh, OpenSea's just based on volume. Uh, so more people are able to get involved over there. So that's interesting. But I don't think I'm going to convince anybody that the crypto is the future just based on people trading NFTs right now. But to the extent that one DeFi becomes a thing, I think a lot of it happens on Solana, assuming they're able to fix these issues. Uh, and then two, to the extent that a lot of these other use cases, NFTs as tickets or membership or all of that kind of stuff happen, they might happen on Solana because you don't want to be paying $100 gas fees in order to like, buy a ticket to a movie or a sporting event or X, Y, or Z thing. Yeah. I mean, you could also go on Eventbrite and buy a ticket, but what's event? Is that web too? Yeah. It's, <laughs> it's, it's weird. It has a business model. They charge fees. They make money. It's an odd thing. No, on the, it's like, so on the DeFi thing, I guess like what, what, I mean, DeFi is kind of this generic term, right? For like trading stuff on crypto. It, it's, as you know, which one, like what use case do you feel like is because I always get that answer. I get to like, well, DeFi. And then I'm like, okay, well, which DeFi use case? And to your point of like, there's a lot of incestuous stuff, right? It always starts with like, so imagine you own this coin and then like everything kind of flows down from there, which is like, all right, but like, look, can we just stop with the initial assumption of like, why do I own this coin in the first place? But you sent me something, you said something that's really interesting, which is like the, the transition into the real world stuff. Uh, and I've heard that a few times and then I never got like a satisfying answer on what that was. Yes. Yeah, so what are those? I think there's there's a bunch of different potential use cases, and this is why I hate doing the the Web three debate generally because it's like the everything sucks right now is like very or not everything, but like there's a lot of stuff that sucks right now is like a very clear obvious stance, and then my stance has to be like, but like this is progress, and in the future yeah. people will build crazy crazy. Well, but that, here's 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 why I push back on that one because just because it doesn't work perfectly right now doesn't mean you can't logically reason your way to why it should work or why it would be better. Like this whole thing of like Solana goes down, they'll fix it. Oh. I mean, even the stuff of like Bitcoin is slow. Honestly, like someone will figure this out. Like the technical problems will be worked out. I I've never been the person who's like, you know, crypto doesn't work because the technical issues are tough or it's like bad for the environment. It's all crap. Like it'll get worked out from a technical perspective. No question. Totally. More about like, okay, how do we reason through why, you know, this use case would be better as opposed to the technical issues? Those ones don't concern me. Yeah, yeah no. So if we, if we reason through why these things can be better, I mean, like, take, for example, no one's done this yet. This is one of those, like, promised things, but the, the real estate transaction that takes three months, needs title, needs all these things that take a long time. You could theoretically make all of these things NFTs and NFT doesn't it doesn't mean there's going to be like a house with a picture of a monkey on it, but these things could all be NFTs and you could transact very quickly. You could borrow against them in a global market as opposed to having to go to Bank of America to take out your mortgage. You have a more kind of open system that that people are able to, I think, transact in more creative ways in. That's so I put my house on the blockchain and then I can borrow against it. Yeah. You can put your house on the blockchain, borrow against it, which again, like here actually is, you know, like a lot of the use cases are like, well, imagine that you're in a place where, you know, inflation is super high. And so this is. Okay. Well, let's, let me just, let's just do that one. Cause that's my favorite one. Uh, I put my house on the blockchain, which doesn't really mean anything. Uh, cause you can't physically put it on the blockchain. Uh, -huh. and then somebody lends me whatever, 500,000 USDC or some stable coin. And then I take it and I buy some ridiculous NFT of Logan. It's probably worth 600,000 or something. Yeah, a lot. And then it goes to zero because they actually look at it. And 
<laughs> now you gotta, you need the money, right? Cause you, you lent me that $500,000. I just like working this through. Like you lent me the $500,000 because my, my digital house was on the blockchain. And then you say, okay, Zach, that Logan thing was pretty stupid. I need your house. This is the record of your house that I own. And then I say, no. What do you do? You show up to the sheriff's department. You like, look at this like piece of cryptography that says I own this house. Like what, like, that's what I mean. Like, what does that even mean? How do you get the house? I think there's a, two separate things here. What I think you're saying implies that like the law never touches crypto and that there's like this whole separate universe. Same thing that would happen if you took out a mortgage and didn't pay would happen. You'd get repossessed. Right. Same thing would, would happen here. Because the bank owns like the title to the house and I've signed a bunch of legal documents showing that I've given them that and those legal documents are basically what you're saying is we're going to recreate the entire system and just have a public record of it. That's all. That's like, to me, that's exactly what, wherever you walk these through ideas through, it always ends up with like, oh, that's, that's not what I'm saying. I'm saying like right now you go to, you go to a bank of America or wherever else. In this case, you might tap into a, a you know, wider pool of, of borrowers who are lenders in this case, get a lower cost of capital, not negotiate with the same bank and be able. Why would I get a lower cost of capital from a random person versus a massive bank like Wells Fargo? Well, you wouldn't, I mean, it'd be from a pool of people. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, it's just, it doesn't, it doesn't work. Like, but I, I don't think it doesn't. I'm all for like the technology is cool, but like you, there's no, as you work the idea through the minute you put an on real asset on chain, you realize, oh, right. Like the only reason I can borrow against these real assets is because there is a document that the U.S. court system will enforce. There's a document in this case too here, and there's no reason that the U.S. court system wouldn't enforce it. It's a smart contract as opposed to like a ream of papers or an online document. But then what makes it smart? The whole point of a smart contract is that the computer can do everything. And here what you're saying is I've got to now take this contract to the U.S. court system. I have to prove that I own it. I need the sheriff to then show up and get me at it. You've just recreated the entire mortgage infrastructure that already exists today on the blockchain <laughs> but that exactly right it's it's like and then I'm, I'm lost as to like why the on the blockchain part matters besides basically what everyone means is they mean oh i want a public record of the transaction okay right like sure that's that's the thing you're looking for but ultimately every other step in the process is essentially the exact same thing you have to do in the real world had you heard a crypto example i mean you were talking to some smart you know a co-founder of a major uh uh crypto exchange today like as you've pressed on this has there been any use case uh and to some extent like the evangelism and enthusiasm of this is somewhat self-perpetuating in that like maybe to the point technologically you were able to do these types of things from residual values with tickets, right? But this is unlocking more galvanization behind this, right? And starting to talk about it in a more meaningful way. Have you, in talking to smart people on crypto, have you heard a use case that like you, you've thought, and it's just a matter of market sizing or something that you just don't believe it's this big or has there not been a single other than digital gold, I guess, uh, which we've talked about, has there been anything that you've, you've heard that makes sense? I would, I would say there's three that I've seen where it's like, okay. And, and, and the, the anchor to the first is always digital gold. Like I yeah. think there's some truth in religion to that, right? Like people believe so it exists. And I think I buy that. Um, what is actually, I don't know this offhand, Packy, what's the market cap of Bitcoin right now? 600 billion. And what's the market cap of gold? It looks like 12 trillion. Yeah, I think it's I think it's a little less, but whatever. Let's just call it ten trillion or something. Let's call Bitcoin one trillion to keep it simple. Uh, so let's say over the course of like thir this is my negative on it. The course of thirty years, right? Like society has to change, and people's belief in like Bitcoin over gold, right? So you want basically what your theory is like the gold asset class kind of comes down as a as a total market cap, and Bitcoin kind of rises because they're interchangeable in terms of how people view them. So now what you've got is like this thirty year bull case of Bitcoin going from a market cap of 800 billion or something to like, I don't know, maybe it evens out, you know, it's clearly not going to replace it. So like it evens out because there's a lot of stuff built on top of gold to like 5 trillion. And if you do the math on that, just as an investment vehicle, and by the way, that's the bull case, right? That is a 5X return over 30 years from where we are, which will give you an IRR of like, I don't know, red point, like 
two percent. What's your what's your returns there? <laughs> <laughs> so you know, it's like I just that anyway. I I didn't mean to start with like here's this good thing and then rip on it, but I didn't love. I don't love the like upside yeah, yeah, case okay. on. So on that's gold. one. What that's other two? And then and then downstream of that is like okay, theoretically, you should be able to provide leverage, quick leverage on top of it, because now we at least have like some stable assets. Sure. So if I own it, by the way, you can get leverage on your gold today. To be very clear, like anybody who can buy gold, you don't buy the physical gold. By the way, you buy paper that represents the gold and you can lever it up. So that's just, it's a little complicated. And I agree, it'll be easier to do it in Bitcoin, but it all starts with that like fundamental Bitcoin belief. Fine. Okay. Like I believe in digital gold religion, we'll have something in there. Two, money laundering and not the actual laundering of the money because crypto is actually probably one of the worst places to launder money. It's actually an amazing feature of like how easy it is to catch criminals, but the enterprise software companies catching the criminals. Chainalysis, TRM Labs, we're an investor in TRM. Those make a lot of sense, right? Like you need to give the authorities, whether it's the FBI or whomever else, tools to track this stuff because it is complicated. And so in a funny way, like this, the ease of which you can catch criminals because you can kind of trace this, it's just kind of hard for authorities to do it, makes I think Chainalysis and TRM like really, really interesting businesses. And, and they pass my sniff test always of like, is this an interesting enterprise software company? And I think they are. I think those are really interesting enterprise software companies. The third one I've heard and like wires and money transfer on like nights and weekends. But here's the thing, like A, what percentage of the like actual money transfer do we need that to be, right? Like what what is the actual impact? I agree it's a gap, like, and it would be nice to be able to do, you know, weekend transfers too, like, you can actually transfer money within Venmo and PayPal and all these other places like pretty easily at any time. It just takes a little bit, you know, to clear. So like, you know, there's some value there. But if you do the math on it, it's like, well, what is the market cap of that problem? And it's like, I don't know, Western Union's market cap, like 20 billion, you know? It, my problem with it is like, that's the big third use case. And then all of a sudden you actually look at the math of like how much money can be made doing this. Because ultimately like you have to make money doing this stuff. Uh, and it looks like Western Union, basically. And those are the three that I think to me have stood out because I, I obviously don't believe in the NFT thing being, you know, a long-term stable opportunity. Uh, beyond that, nothing. Nothing has passed the SIF test. That I would, I would bet on. Nothing that I would like write a check into and be like, I believe this is going to be a profitable business in 15 years.